So it's time we start getting some AI logic working for the game. So I'm just going to show y'all what I have at the moment. It's, it's pretty bad in all honesty, but it's a start. So let me just show you what it looks like. It's there, there's still tons, tons of stuff we need to do. Um, and I apologize for anyone who's following along. I haven't done a very good job uh, as far as uh, showing you everything I've done to get to this step. Uh, I'm going to show you what I have um, after this. And I also is on my GitHub and I'll link my GitHub in the description and you can take a look at the project uh, and just look at the code for yourself. But I am going to show you. Show, I'm going to show you the code, but it's it's hard to follow along if, I, if I'm not showing you the steps uh, as I'm doing them. But anyways, all right. So basically, the field is divided up into, let me just show you. We have zones. So we have a zone for each player, and I'm actually going to add more zones. And, and tweak this in the near future but they're just they're just uh cubes and i just disabled the mesh render on them but you can see if i select all of them you'll see these green squares so each player gets assigned a zone uh so four players four zones on each half of the midfield line so this player's home zone's here, this player's home zone's there, this one's home zone is right here and right there. Now that's also where they go to defend. They go to their home zone uh, whenever the other team has the ball and they're playing defense. Um, and if the ball gets within a certain radius, then they will move and try to get the ball. They will seek the ball. Uh, now their attack zones is just they stay in the same formation, but it's on the other team's half of the field. So this guy's attack zone is here. This guy's is here. This guy's is here. This guy's is here. Um, so that's pretty much all I have right now. I'm still obviously tweaking the logic. I uh, don't have any AI for the controlling player. Uh, they can't, they, if, they, if the other team gets the ball, the dude just goes in like whatever direction he was going in last and he just goes on infinitely it's really annoying but i just haven't gotten around to doing any uh controlling player ai stuff yet and in all honesty guys i'm not very good when it comes to ai this is all new to me so this project is going to be changing a lot um i wouldn't by all means follow along if you can but i apologize if it's really hard to follow along in all honesty i expect it to be hard to follow along but um this is just something i've been wanting to do for a while and i figured i would just show people my progress and once it's all said and done i would like to go back through and create a very polished tutorial series on on how to do all this so yeah now that that's out of the way, let's show you the code. So um, on each player, we have we have a state manager. And nested in, inside the state manager is each one of our states. So we have an idle state, seek state, attack state, and defend state. Idle state does absolutely nothing. Seek ball state obviously goes and gets the ball. Attack state is what I just showed you. It, it moves to the other the other side of the field um to a zone over there and all all the the zone assigning gets gets done in the gameplay manager so if we go to the gameplay manager um and i'm sure there's a better way to do this i, I know there's some kind of for loop or for each loop that i could have done to do this but <laughs> honestly i just i just did this because it took less thought and it works so anyways um yeah, so each player has a, in the player script, they have a home zone, which also could be defend zone. I'm probably going to rename that. And they have an attack zone. Now, um, the field zone is the script that is attached to all of the zones. It's basically just 
used for used as a tag right now um let's see where were we gameplay manager so yeah we nest them all in the gameplay manager and then the gameplay manager at the start just gets all the components into children by field zone and sends them to the list of field zones and we um we assign the index of the player to the same index of the field zone uh that's for their home zone so that this is done at the very beginning in the start method and then the uh set player attack zone this does the same thing except it assigns the correct um uh, zone that they're going to be running to whenever they want to attack somebody or not attack somebody whenever they want to uh whenever they're on offense and they're attacking the defense um yeah all right so the state machine uh we got first of all we need what we have the state manager this is like the parent object that goes on the child that all our states will live in um yeah just take a look at that code um it, yeah it basically just kicks off the state machine if the game is active and it's not being user if the player's not being user controlled then run the state machine um if not then nothing's gonna happen uh so yeah and then we got our where is it we have a state oh we got player state i renamed it to player state so this is our base class for all of our states and uh it's an abstract class just so we can have this abstract method all this means is that anything that inherits from this class has to have a run current state method and this is basically where all the logic will live for each state uh just think of it as an update function really because that's where it's going that's where it goes is the update function and that was what we were just in the state manager yeah see run state machine um or is that the same let me see run state machine and no okay that's different so never mind but it, either way this goes uh this thing of this is like an update method um and so our states our idle state you get the reference references to all the different states that it could possibly transition to from the state you're in so the idle i don't think ever gets called it just starts here and then once it leaves here at least the logic i've seen there's no way it's going to go back to the idle state but in the future that'll probably change um so yeah, we got if the player has possession, then we're going, or if the, if the player's team has possession, then we're gonna go and do the attack state. If the team does not have possession, then we're gonna go do the defense state. And then if none of those are true, which one of them has to be true, um, then we'll return this, meaning we'll, we'll keep running the idle state. Uh, so we got the attack player state, Again, it just gets references to the possible uh, possible states that it could transition to. So if the team has possession of the ball, but the player doesn't have possession, then this state is true. And we're going to return this and we're going to get the right um, direction to send our player um, based off of his attack zone. So if the player's team does not have possession, then the state active is false. And the reason I, I use the state active bool is so I can do the movement in the fix update. Uh, I don't want to apply any physics based movement in the regular update. You want to do all that in the fix update. But if you were to just call this, um, like if you didn't have this bool right here, it would just run this logic regardless like it, it would run this logic all the time and all these different states would be all trying to run their fixed update logic at the same time but this makes it to where the state has to be true the state has to be active for you to apply movement to the player so um the defend player states 
very similar. It's very basic in, in the sense of just the logic at this point of what's really going on. It's, it's really dumb logic. It really is. But it's something for now. It's something to build off of. Um, yeah, the, the fin state, just take a look at it. Uh, let me make this, this bigger. So it's similar to the attack state. And again, guys, this code is on my GitHub. I will, um, I will link it in the description. So just check it out. I try to, I try to do things semi clean, uh, so it's easy to read. Um, I don't like doing a lot of comments. All right, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Uh, pursue ball. I'm working on this one. And the seek ball. You just get the direction. Uh, the direction you go to seek the ball, you just take the ball's position and you minus uh, your player's current position and you just normalize it and then you just apply that to the velocity of the rigid body of the player. Um, so that's kind of it right now. It's I'm, It feels like I'm in the middle of something and it feels like it's getting messy, a little out of hand, uh, but it's, it's honestly going good <laughs> after saying all that it, it is a good start it's something uh and yeah i'm excited about what this could what this could be how, how good the ai could be now i'm just waiting for the whole thing to blow up in my face like the coyote and the run and the road runner um because that's usually what happens usually it's going to get to the point where it's just really hard to maintain and and to refactor and just work with and then it just kind of falls apart on me and i lose all motivation to work on the project so i'm hoping that does not happen and we keep this bad boy going because starting to get fun now if you like this video or found it useful please consider giving me a like and a subscribe as that really does help me out a lot with youtube's algorithm and plus it just makes me really happy all right, thank you and duck bless.